Well, the UAW strike appears to be over, still has to be voted on, but the uh, big three have all come to an agreement after a six-week strike with the UAW. Ford was the first domino to fall, and since then, uh, Stellantis and then GM yesterday, the last one to come down. Of course, we got the uh, GM Fairfax plant here in town that has been out of work for the better part of five weeks. So Daniel House uh, has been joining us here. We appreciate his time from the Detroit News, senior editor for business and a columnist on KCMO in Kansas City. All right, Daniel, uh, the winner, the loser, how would you stack that up here with these uh, Detroit Big Three coming to deals with the UAW? Oh, that's easy. The winner is uh, Sean Payne in the UAW, uh, biggest contract. They're touting it since the 1960s. Uh, which I think is probably true uh, in terms of the gains. Um, back in the 60s, you would get some gains that they hadn't had before. Now they're getting gains that they had and lost in bankruptcy, and now are getting them back. Okay. Uh, this is a record contract and really, really expensive. Mm-hmm. It is. So, you know, Sean Fain, uh, listen, I was very critical of him on this show for the last several weeks. It was kind of a Bernie Sanders approach to uh, negotiating mm-hmm. in terms of some of the things he was saying. But he did get more money yep. for his workers. So what's there's there's got to be a, a fallout here, though. Is it higher cost for cars? Is it now the big three basically looking to lessen their exposure to the UAW and doing more business in Mexico or Canada? What what something's going to happen here, right? These corporations aren't dumb. No, I think you just answered it. Uh, the uh, price of a vehicle, Ford estimates, will go up between eight hundred and fifty and nine hundred dollars a unit. So call it a thousand bucks just to make it simple. Uh, that's going to be passed on to some extent, but to consumers, um, I do think they're going to be looking at different ways to to rationalize their footprint in North America. And you may see additional capacities being being utilized in the United States, or in Mexico, and Canada. Um, this is this. There is going to be a push on the salaried side within the business to find efficiencies. Uh, that don't have to go through a union contract, that's going to be somewhat divisive. If you talk to salaried people in, in, in Detroit, they get a little scratchy about these kinds of things for reasons that are understandable. So, you know, the gains of both union workers are uh, are come at their expense to, 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 in some cases. So I think all the way around, it's going to be more expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the hourly labor cost, I think... Ford estimates their hourly labor cost is going to go from about $65 all in. That's wages, benefits, overtime, everything, to uh, somewhere in the mid to high 80s. Wow. Uh, whereas you will be, you know, Toyota's around 55 and Volkswagen and Nissan and Honda in the United States and Tesla's at 45. So potentially you could be looking at a situation where they're almost double. Well, the last thing I would say is they're gonna, they're gonna, they're going to. Uh, Sean Fain is vowing that they are going to organize the transplants. This has historically been a total failure by the UAW when they've tried to do this in the past. Uh, but I do think they have the moment on their side, as you point out, um, in terms of there's a lot more sympathy towards labor unions today than there was you know, 5, 10, 15 years ago, and they may be able to seize that moment. Now, whether they can do it in the American South remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. So you're saying they could basically move to, like Tesla operates in uh, Texas in large part, so you're saying they could go to and move some of their operations, the corporations, that is, to some red states, uh, you know, do some union busting and get out of, where you're at there in Detroit, is that is that a potential plan for these automakers? Uh, no, I would think not, not move, uh, but I do think you have a company like Ford, which is investing $11.5 billion, you know, its largest manufacturing investment in its history, in Tennessee and in Kentucky. And, uh, I mean, in Tennessee alone, it's like 5 and a half to $6 billion. Wow. And Tennessee tends to be a pretty virulently anti-union state, although the, there are UAW-represented plants in Tennessee. I mean, GM having a huge uh, operation in Spring Hill is a good example. So um, these right-to-work states aren't necessarily, in fact, anti-union. They do have union uh, uh, operations in them. 
and until very recently, Michigan was a right to work state. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's kind of a that's kind of a red herring, frankly. Okay. Um, right. okay. I'm not saying they're going to move. I'm not saying they would move operations. I'm saying that they may look at existing operations and, and add additional capacities. But that is another thing that happened in this negotiation is they the union won the right to strike over plant closures and investments. So if they if they have a as I understand it if they have a, a plant that doesn't have a product it doesn't have an investment i.e. doesn't have a future i.e. doesn't have jobs um, the union has won the right to strike over that which historically they've not been able to do. I I don't know how you run uh, a major corporation like no. this when you know now you're giving these folks the right to just walk out uh, it seems like willy nilly on almost anything. Um, Mm -hmm. and you're going to be falling behind Toyota and Honda and some of these others even more than they already have. How much do you think that is a concern today in the boardrooms of Ford, GM and Stellantis? Oh, I, I tell you, it's a huge concern. Uh, but what I can also tell you is that the the conversation, trying to inject the word competition into the conversation with the uh, Sean Fain and the UAW was a non-starter. I mean, he would just say that competition is code for a race to the bottom. Ah. Well, no, it's not. And, you, you know, you have co- competitors. And, and I would remind people that, you know, the foreign-owned automakers control a majority of the market share in the United States, not Detroit. Detroit's in minority. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, th- this competi- these co- companies are con- con- going to continue to compete. Now, this deal is going to be inflationary for those companies. They typically have responded to UAW contracts by sweetening their pay and their benefits uh, for their own workers to keep the union out um, and to keep that less attractive. I suspect that's going on right now. They are historically very tight-lipped and do not talk about what they do with their employees. Um, and so it's really hard for us to be able to assess their reaction. But I, I yeah, I think there's going to be, there's going to be deep concern. Uh, and there are, there's already deep concern on wall street. I mean, we just did a calculation that was in the story this morning. Uh, they've lost uh, between the three companies. They've lost $40 billion in market cap since they began auto talks in July. Wow. So wow. that's one marker of the, investor sentiment on what's going on there are other things there's been a scaling back of ev um, targets by both gm and ford um uh, not very good results by ford in the most recent uh, quarterly report so there's other things that are that are also contributing to that but i don't think you can deny that in- investors have have taken their measure of what's going on with sean Payne and the company and said this is not good uh, for the longer term uh, investment in these companies. Well, Daniel, we really appreciate your insight the last several weeks. Uh, Daniel Howes, Detroit News, a senior editor for business and a columnist there. Um, you've been on the front lines of this, and we are grateful for you sharing some of that insight here in Kansas City. Thank you so much. You bet. All right. Well done there by uh, Daniel Howes on KCMO Talk Radio.